To God be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, I really want to thank um, those who have just uh, literally subscribed. I welcome you and I thank God for you. And I pray that um, what is happening here, uh, you'll be impacted by you know what the Lord is speaking to the glory of the Lord. The Bible says that what? He says in his word, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be, they shall be filled. And I pray that as you continue to learn from what the Father is basically speaking, that the glory of the Lord will continue to manifest and the revelation of his will be what? Be revealed in, through, with, for, and as you. So it is for that reason that I truly want to speak uh, this word today because I believe that this is what the Father is intending and the Father is doing in creation at this point in time not intending this is what he's actually doing and the reason why i said this is what the father is doing is because the bible says that what it says judgment shall begin from the house of the lord so it's a place where the lord is cleaning up house and not just that in itself he's cleaning up houses that are making mockery of his name yeah that's why you can hear that scripture that says that what god cannot what be mocked so there are a lot of people who are in the body and they continue to do things and they're doing it to what at the expense of the lives of other people not understanding that what they are doing is bringing judgment on the acts of those that are with them and at the same time this is the reason why the father is intending to clean this up in order to what to bring the fear of the lord back onto the body of christ do you see that? So there are some times the Lord does some things that he brings the fear of him back onto the body. So it's not that we are afraid of God. No, the fear of the Lord is a beautiful dimension because it's the fear of the Lord that causes you to be obedient, to want to read, to want to do his will, to rejoice, to, to praise him, to worship him, to just want to love on him. Do you see that? So the fear of the Lord is not like I have to be afraid. No, God is not looking for people who are going to be afraid of him, but who are going to fear him so the fear of the lord is reconciliation do you see that the fear of the lord is reconciliation so it is for that reason i just wanted to share this and i'm going to share something that the lord basically brought to my attention and from from there uh, i'm going to help to exp explain the journey that i walked in and then to understand what the lord intends to do so it's a place where you know i was just sitting down and the lord basically brought i'm sure a lot of us has probably watched the movie um uh 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 yeah, not to go into the name basically, but I'm sure if I speak of it, a lot of us might might have seen it before. So it talks about there was this man, right? He was a doctor and um, he began his journey as a doctor and uh, there was an event that he, he and his wife usually attend, I believe every year. So on this particular year, they decided to attend the event. And then, you know, it was a place where he met his old friend. And while they were having a conversation together, the friend basically invited him and said, hey, you know, I will be playing here and here. Would you like to come? And he said, well, if I'm not doing anything, I will check it out. So this man, the doctor, basically was having a conversation with his wife and the conversation did not go too well. So he decided to basically go out. You know, he went to visit a patient. Then from there, decided to check up on his friend who then decided to invite him to an event that he was going after he finished playing at the bar. So after the conversation ensued, he decided, no, I'm not going to go home. I'm going to try the place my friend recommended out. So he went and got a costume because everybody had to be dressed in a costume. A password was given. He got the costume and headed out to the place where the event was happening. So as he got to the event, the doctor that is, he went right in, gave the password and went in. And while he got into this very place, the hall thereabout, there was initiation that was happening. Yeah, you know, it was women altogether. They were being initiated. I believe it was a cult, basically. So from there in itself, he was watching how things were being done. Meanwhile, there was two other people who were watching him because he didn't fit in to the crowd. It seemed like a very strange person because they had never seen him before. So right after he had experienced all that was happening right in there, it was all immorality that was happening. So the, the women were being initiated to basically, you know, walk in immorality with the men at that particular moment. 
So while all of this was happening, you know, while after the initiation had happened, it was a place where the women needed to pick a man. And this woman decided to pick him. And while they were walking together, the woman began to say to him, you've never been here before. He said, no, I've never been. This is my first time. And then eventually, as the conversation began to manifest, the woman said to him, this is not the place you need to be. And he was like, why not? I just want to experience it. The woman said, no, this is not the place where you need to be. You need to actually leave. So he said, well, I'm going to still look around. The woman left him. And while he was witnessing all the immoralities that was happening, this woman came looking for him once again and said, hey, you need to leave now. And if you don't leave, this might cost you your life. So eventually what happened? He decided to, you know, walk with this woman and they came and called him and said, hey, sir, while he was walking with the woman, that is, you know, they called him, they called his attention to something that he left behind. And as he was walking back to the entrance, all of a sudden he came face to face with the leader of the cult. So as they were basically having a conversation, it was a place they were asking him, how did you get in here? Who led you here? You know, all of these questions was transpiring. Eventually what happened? It was a place where they told him to take off his mask. He did. So right there, they wanted to begin to humiliate him. And the, at the point where the humiliation was almost going to start off, the woman who had basically selected him right from the very beginning stopped them and he said, stop, don't do that. You know, he's with me. You know, I'm going to redeem him. And the woman, the men were looking at the woman like, are you sure that this is what you want to do? She said, yeah, you know, and they asked her, do you know the consequences of what you're doing? She said, yes, I do which means she was redeeming him and it was a life for a life redemption. Do you see that? So eventually the man walked out of the place, but in the end, the woman who redeemed him died. So you can begin to see he was now trying to find answers and they, were, they kept threatening him that he shouldn't look further. You know, they kept following him up and down. They began to what? Attack his family. And from then on, do you see what happened? It was a place eventually he had to walk away from that and his wife was then left alone. Now, from this in which I shared, the father gave me a dream, you know, and this is what the dream basically uh, is, is, is speaking about. So it was a place one day I was sitting with somebody in the car and we were driving. And as we're driving, what happened? It was a place where as we're going straight, the car suddenly veered to this house where there was a front door. Coming to this house as I was driving, accidentally, the car kind of hit the door and the door came off. So in the process of it, there were men in that building. Like, oh, they all came out. You know, some of them came out and they were like, what happened here? What happened here? And I said, sorry, you know, because it was just an accident. You know, if the, if the door is damaged, I'm willing to kind of replace it. But they said, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And eventually left. So I drove on. Then I was beginning to ponder on what was happening. Why did I basically suddenly veer into that what? Into that dimension in itself. And then hit the door and the men came out. And the father began to explain to me through what? Through the book of Ephesians and chapter 5. And this is what Ephesians chapter 5 declares. It says here, it says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all godliness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. In verse 11, it goes on to say, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. So now you can see the Father was helping me to understand. Hitting that door coming out and those men coming out, the Bible says it is shameful even what the disobedient do in secret. So those people were actually members of cults and they were having a secret meeting. So hitting the door coming off was the Father exposing what they were doing in the secret. Do you see that? So the father was exposing that in which they were doing in secret. So this is where you're going to begin to understand. In the book of Ezekiel and chapter 8, this is what the Bible declares from verse 6. And he said to me, son of man, 
Do you see what they are doing? The utterly detestable things the Israelites are doing here. Things that will drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance of the court. I looked and I saw a hole in the wall. He said to me, son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked and detestable things they are doing. So I went in and looked and I saw portrayed all over the walls, all kinds of crawling things and unclean animals, all the idols of Israel. In front of them stood 70 elders of Israel, and Jezaniah, son of Shaphan, was standing among them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. He said to me in verse 12, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of Israel are doing in the darkness? Each at the shrine of their own idol. They said the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Again, he said, you will see them doing things that are what? More detestable. So you can begin to understand this is the hour that the Father is actually exposing cultism within the body. You see, there are a lot of leaders that are basically claiming that they follow Christ. Indeed, they are of Christ, but then they've delved into what? Into cultism. For some of them, they have been in cults for such a long time, and they have been mixing light with darkness. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 6 says, what has the temple of God got to do with Belial? So this is what majority of the leaders in the body are actually doing. They are mixing the temple of God, mixing it with Belial, giving it to the people, defiling them and profaning the sanctuary of God. So for that reason is why the Father is shining light on that which is dark to expose the secret things that the disobedient are doing in secret. So you can see a lot of people who are in cults, yeah, the Father is going to begin to expose it. Why? Because for majority of them, the Father has been telling them to give up this act, to do away with this thing, to give it up, to come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing, but rather they continue to mock the Father. They continue to mock Christ. They continue to mock the things of the Spirit and they believe that nobody is going to find them out. They believe that nobody is going to catch them at what they're doing. Some of them, yes, they offer up detestable sacrifices altogether to appease gods because even some of those sanctuaries, they are actually shrines. Yeah, they are shrines. So you can see, that is what the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Because for some people, they have not judged the fruit and then ended up in places where the Father did not want them in the first place. So for that reason, there are many people that have gone into slavery, into exile, just because of the activities of these leaders. So for that reason is why the Father in this hour is expecting Posing them. For some of them, they will repent. And when they repent, the Father will grant them mercy to be restored. For some of them, because of the depth of the cultism in which they have been participating in, they might not want to repent. And for that reason, some of them, they are actually going to go to sleep. Yeah, some of them are going to die. So for that reason is why the Father is intentionally calling the people in this hour, repent and be baptized. So he's calling people who are delved in this thing to turn from their wickedness. Why? Because the Bible helps us to understand that God cannot be mocked. For a long time, they've mocked him. For a long time, they've treated him as if he's some entity that is not responsive. But now the Father is showing his true self to come against those idolatries and the people who basically participate in them, especially the leaders. Amen? Because that's what the Bible says here. It says the elders of Israel. So the Lord is dealing with leaders in this hour who are actually in cultism. So you can see when I was explaining about the story of that man, he went in and then began, he wanted to participate. But majority of the leaders, this is what they are participating in. So you can see them. They do these things behind the scene, but God sees them even though nobody sees them. So for that reason, as the dream basically helped to understand that what? The door, a car basically rammed into the door and the door came off. This is where the father is pulling the covers off so that you can see that in which they are doing exactly. 
Amen? So for there are other people. So I want to speak in this second dimension. There are people who have built up sanctuaries for the sake of God, but they are not followers of God. They are false priests, false prophets, false leaders, false reverends, false all of those things. They are false everything. Yes, but they are basically building sanctuaries. Yet, yeah, because they call it in Revelation chapter 3, the synagogue of Satan. So you can begin to understand. They've set up this thing and they've manifested it and the Father is declaring justice upon those kind of sanctuaries. Now, the reason why I shared that testimony, I mean, sorry, that um, that movie right from the very beginning is because that is what I have walked in in times past. There was a leader that I met and it, exactly in the same dimension. His synagogue is the synagogue of Satan. So much immorality in there, which I explained because it was, a, it was, first of all, somebody who was walking as an escort. They sent after me. Secondly, it was a prostitute. They sent after me. So there was so much immorality that was happening there. Not only that, they told me, keep quiet. Don't say anything. You must make sure you don't tell anybody anything that is happening here. So eventually after leaving, do you see, they began to follow. They began to persecute. Sometimes they come. They begin to, you know, they watch behind the scenes. Then they attack all of what, all of, can you see those, some of those dimensions? Because they don't want anybody knowing their secrets. Because these are the secrets of what? Of Satan in which they are performing in that in itself. So the father for this dimension. Can you see that in itself? So the father began to help me to understand. You can see the immorality that is happening because some of the synagogue of Satan, their leaders are actually engraved with Satan. They are basically one-on-one -on -one with Satan. There is no difference between them and Satan at all. So for that reason is why the father is helping to understand. For these dimensions of sanctuaries, the father at the same time is exposing the deeds of darkness. Do you see that as well is exposing it because in the regard of what i was sharing yeah can you see somebody came and redeemed and then exchanging life for life so it could have been somebody trying to come and hey don't touch that person so the father has warned them consistently so for majority of you who have been walking in this dimension the father has been warning them to leave you alone to let you be just like that woman was saying don't touch him don't touch him eventually there was redemption that was there and the woman died so for some of you, it's a place somebody has redeemed you from in that dimension and the Father is helping to understand. Only Christ is allowed to do that. So for that reason, yeah, they will go to sleep too. Can you see? Because that was the dimension I walked in. So I'm thankful that the Father brought me out of that. And for majority of you, this is what the Father is speaking, that for centuries, synagogues of Satan that have been what? That are under the covering and trying to move as if they are in Christ Jesus. The Father is exposing them in this hour. Yeah. And it's not just going to be a quiet exposure. This is going to be a public exposure. Yeah. Because the Father is trying to set his people free who have gone into captivity under such sanctuaries. So for that reason, you're going to begin to see it on the social media. You're going to begin to see it on the news. Yeah, you know, uh, you will see uh, 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 private investigators. They went in there, then they expose it on the news. You will see it that somebody went in there and all of a sudden it's appearing on the nine o'clock news, on the six o'clock news and exposing them. Some of them is on social media, on website. Hey, we caught this person. This was what they were doing behind the scene. This is going to be what? Manifesting all over creation because this is what the Father is intending to do. All those sanctuaries that belong to Satan, the Father is pulling them down by exposing their activities and the leaders who belong to Christ and are engaged in cultic activities, the Father is exposing that too. For some of them, they will listen to corrections, they will turn from their wickedness and the Father will show mercy. And some of them, because of the depth in which they've walked in, they will not turn away from it and they will go to sleep. Do you see that in itself? This is what the Lord is intending to do in creation. Do you see that? And I want to bless those that the Father has intended, yes, to bring out and they will follow his ways. I want to bless those people with mercy. And for those at the same time who have been caught up in the synagogue of Satan and you did not know you were there at the same time as the Father is leading you out, as you turned away from this, I bless you too with the mercy of God. So you can begin to understand the Father in this hour, Pharaoh is letting the people go because this is the freedom and the liberty the Lord intends to bring. So what is happening in this hour is according to Ephesians and chapter 5. 
It says here in verse 12, it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by light becomes visible. So the Lord in this hour is making it all visible for all to see. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So I bless each and every one of you and I thank the Lord for you. You all are the blessedness of the Father and I love you all so very much. Stay blessed because you're the blessedness of the Father. Hallelujah. Love you all. Amen.